Through the eyes of Chambers, a brief walk through Parkstead House. Parkstead House was built in 1761 by the architect William Chambers, best known for his work on Somerset House London and the Pagoda at Kew London. William Chambers went on to co-found the Royal Academy of Arts, a privately funded institution used to promote creation, enjoyment and appreciation of visual arts through exhibitions, education and debate. William Chambers was a Scottish-Swedish architect working in London during the Georgian period. It was around 1750 when Chambers focused on building houses in the English countryside for the nobility, beginning with Lord Bessborough of Roehampton, who required a country mansion to house his collection of classical artefacts. This Palladian-style neoclassical mansion was built to house William Ponsonby, the second Earl of Bessborough, and his family. Parkstead House stood in Roehampton and provided access to London's city centre whilst also being situated in the rural setting of Roehampton. It is now used as a lecture room by Whitelands College in association with Roehampton University. Parkstead House is littered with classically inspired and influenced designs. Briefly looking at the exterior of the building, we are able to see the rustification of the ground floor. This was a method used by architects in an attempt to recreate and imitate the effects of classical ruins. Either side of the six columns in the centre of the building, there are two spiral staircases that leads up to the second level of the house. Making our way through this Georgian country home, we begin our journey up the staircase into what is now called the Ponsonby Room. Named after William Ponsonby, the second Earl of Bessborough, this room would have been used as one of the entertainment rooms within the house, and it sits on the second floor and has roughly 66 square metres of floor space. It is more than likely that this room would have been one of the host rooms for parties for the rich, the famous and the noble. If we take a moment to look closely at the elaborately decorated ceiling, we are able to make out classically inspired frescoes. We are able to see an owl in the corner of the ceiling. This would have been linked to the classical god Athena, who was known for her wisdom. Moving into the middle of the ceiling, we can see symbols linked to art, culture, literature and music. It is possible that this links the Ponsby Room to celebrations, parties and social occasions. Moving on to the beautifully simple fireplace, compared to what we can be found in the following rooms. We can see that there are two small scale iconic style columns on either side of the fireplace. Embossed on the centre tile is a kylix draped with grapes. This connotes to the possible activities that may have taken place here. These were possibly similar to a symposium, which would have meant drinking and socialising for those in public figure roles. Connected to this room is the Richmond Room, named suitably for the, for the spectacular view over Richmond Park that can be seen through the full-length patio door situated in the middle of the far wall. Entering this room, it is evident that the classical style runs through the main body of Parkstead House. Much like the Ponsby Room, the Richmond Room would have been used as one of the entertainment rooms within the house. It sits on the second floor and has roughly 73 square metres of floor space. More commonly today, the Richmond Room is used to host wedding celebrations. It is wonderful to know that nearly 300 years of this part of the house is still used as an entertainment room. On closer analysis of the decorated ceiling, the classical design is still apparent as seen by the gorgons on the upper trim of the walls. However, it is not now as concentrated and the fresco now depicted much more floral designs. It is the fireplace in this room that holds the majority of the classical theme. We are able to decipher a lyre, oilless pipes and reeds. All of these denote celebrations and festivals of entertainment and partying. The third and final room that we are going into today is the Vesper Room. Similar to the Ponsonby Room and the Richmond Room, the Vesper Room would have been used as one of the entertainment rooms within the house. It also sits on the second floor and has roughly 58 square metres of floor space. The ceiling fresco in this room is incredibly symmetrical and carries through the floral detailing as well as the simplistic colours. Once again, the fireplace in the Vesper Room showcases the iconic columns Parkstead House is known to have. The leafy floral patterns seen on the ceiling are linked into the fireplace to create continuity within the room itself. Finally, if we look briefly into the bottom floor of Parkstead House, we can see where the servants would have practiced their fresco designs before being allowed to create the ceiling design seen in all three of the main rooms today. Despite not being so eloquent and decorated, they do allow us to have significant historical impressions from the past. Despite the many different owners of Parkstead House, the change of name, the shift in usage and the type of inhabitant, 
Hartstead House remains a uniquely wonderful building littered with life and history from anyone who's been lucky enough to enter its doors, no matter their agenda.